We're back. Our final road to the Derby race before the wild card. Andrew Capone, who's got the action. Caleb Knight taking a stand. Uh, Caleb, we're, we're, we're getting in here. This is our last one. We're down at Keeneland opening weekend. Um, before we just touch on this, let's talk about just the weather. Keeneland pouring rain out today. Talking snow tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. What's going on? Keeneland opening. This is Wesley Ward, flowers, people in dresses, big hats. What's going on down there? It's uh, I'm not necessarily excited about this Keeneland weather that we got going on. I know it is definitely a bummer. I have friends that have told me they've got three sundresses they've picked out and they're going to be out there in boots and a raincoat <laughs> instead. So um, I think everyone's a little disappointed that the weather is not cooperating, but I still think it's a good field and it's, it'll be a fun race either way, but it is disappointing that uh, we're going to have some nasty weather coming through. Yeah. Our final hundred point race here. Um, the bluegrass little opportunity here. Nice size field. Full field here. We'll start off with the number one, 12, Command Performance. Uh, 12 to 1 in morning right, right where he should be. Bridesmaid type, who's lost the horse to the outside last time out. Uh, red Hot Irad in the iron, so I expect the horse to be in very good position. Um, outworked Modonigal last week down in Florida before shipping up a nice five minute, five for long workout in a minute flat. Um, could be cycling into something good right here. I think this horse is uh, one you definitely want to use underneath on tickets and possibly a win bet. Um, the horse is just training well, and it did outwork McDonagall. They worked together down, uh, I believe it was Palm Beach. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens here. Uh, but definitely a, a top Pletcher, I read Ortiz, four weeks out from the Derby. What else could you ask for? What would you think of the two and the three? Yeah, number two, Fenwick. Uh, actually turned the, not turned the tables, but pulled off a, a monumental upset last out when he beat command performance uh, at 20 to one that day. I don't really know where that race came from. He, he's never shown that kind of speed before. He's never shown that finishing ability before. So that was a huge race and an improvement on that race would make him somewhat of a contender in here. But I have to think that's probably not likely. To me, this feels like the kind of horse that if you miss the wedding, don't go to the funeral. I wasn't a believer then, and until I see him repeat that or even improve on it, which he does need to do to compete here, I'm not really going to be a big fan or a big believer. But if you think you know you want a horse on the lead here, if you think the pace is favorable to him, which I could see that argument, then I, I could see the case for uh, taking Paco on the loose leader and seeing how far he can take him. Number three, Trademark. This is another horse that will likely be a part of the pace scenario, if nothing else. So uh, you got Victoria Oliver and Rafael Bejarano, another horse that shipped up from Tampa. This horse really wasn't able to land a blow against Classic Causeway and either the Sam F. Davis or the Tampa Bay Derby. I do think this is probably a tougher spot than either of those two races. And this horse really hasn't shown much once moved into stakes company. I think this is probably a very nice allowance horse, uh, maybe even a ungraded stakes type of a runner here, but I don't know that this horse really has the, the quality to be a, a derby winner right now, or even a bluegrass winner in this race. I think there's other speed in here that's probably a little quicker and maybe a little classier. So I don't think trademark is going to be on many of my tickets. What'd you think of the number four, Zandon? So number four, Xander, before I get to it, just want to give you a heads up. Keeneland just got the text message from the, the automated service that it's raining sideways and they moved the track to sloppy. So they're on sloppy today. So I can expect with the rain and snow they're expecting tomorrow morning to again be on sloppy for that race. Just keeping that in mind. The number four, Xander, Chad Brown, Pratt takes the mound here, has yet to win at this distance. Third in the Risen Star race where the pace scenario just didn't set up for him. Morning works again continue to be perfect. I hope this is not a horse that's just a morning horse because I like him in this opportunity here. I've uh, been working with a horse named Reinvestment Risk, one of Chad Brown's top up-and-coming stakes horses. Entered uh, Reinvestment Risk is entered in the Carter on Saturday. Um, Zandon will be shorter. I think his second or third favorite here, uh, but I really like this horse in this position here. Figures just set, set up perfectly. Pace scenario sets up perfectly. I think this is going to be one of Chad's, one of probably three Chad uh, horses that enters the Derby this year. Uh, moving on to the five, Volcanic. Uh, 21 to one team seems short here on this Marcassi trained horse. This horse is out of form and not working his best for the barn. Um, I think this horse is a mile or seven furlong specialist. Cassie and Adam have been terrible as of late teaming up together. Um, the horse would need the ultimate trip to get there. Um, I don't think this horse has any shot this coming Saturday volcanic. This is a toss for me. I hope somebody, somebody 
takes money. I hope they interview Mark Cassie on TVG. He pour, blows up that the horse has been working amazing in great form cycling in, and, and we get a, some pool fillers here. This is a horse I think you can easily toss off your ticket. Uh, what did you think of the six and the seven? Yeah, I hope you're right on Volcanic. <laughs> as far as number six, Emmanuel, this is a horse that I have heard some steam uh, building behind this horse. I, I do think a lot of folks like this horse. I didn't really know what to make of him in the Fountain of Youth. I, I thought he kind of had some really soft trips in his prior two starts at Gulfstream in Tampa, where he inherited a pretty much loose lead, wasn't pressured, got slow fractions. His trip in the Fountain of Youth was pretty much the polar opposite of what he experienced and got to enjoy up until that point, where he did not get the lead. He was out a little bit slow. He was extremely wide, very deep on the course, lost pretty much as much ground as you ever could while going a mile and a 16th at the short stretch at Gulfstream. And I don't think he ran poorly. I think that he ran fine. He, he understandably tired after being very wide and losing that ground. And that is a race that came back to the mid pack type of runners where simplification looped the field and in due time ended up splitting horses to get up for second. Um, he wasn't really impacted by the, the spill in that race where a couple of horses went down, but I don't think that he's necessarily a horse that I'm going to rush to bet back at a short price. This is a horse that I think very well could be on the lead or just off the lead in a race that I think probably does favor horses that are forwardly placed, but I'm a little just concerned about the price with him. I think people are going to see that wide trip last time. They're going to see Pletcher, Saez, Windstar Farms, and they're going to go and bet this horse and make him shorter than I'm comfortable taking him. If I could get him in the five or six to one range, I think I would feel good. But if he ends up going off in the five to two or two to one range, that's going to be far too short for me. So I think this is the horse I got to let Price be my guide. For number seven, Golden Glider. This is the second half of Mark Cassie's entries here. Uh, between the two, I, I probably do prefer this one, even though I'm not particularly high on either of the two. Um, I thought that in the Sam F. Davis, he probably had the slightly worse trip compared to his stable mate. I don't think he was ever going to finish dramatically better than he did, but he was shut off in the stretch, which probably cost him maybe one or two positions and a length of finishing distance. Uh, he came back in the Tampa Bay Derby, though, and again was finishing somewhat strongly, but that race did not come back very fast, nor did it come back very strong. Um, this is not a horse that I think you can do a whole lot with. I'd be extremely surprised to see him win this race, and I think – Third or fourth is probably a, a pretty good outcome for Golden Glider here. That takes us to number eight, Ethereal Road. Uh, any thoughts there, Andrew? So Ethereal Road, uh, you know, just in general, uh, Keeneland, when it does get sloppy, the ra rail on routes hasn't been the best as of late. Um, we're just going back to last year's spring data, which wasn't the well, – there wasn't a, a ton of rain back then, but you definitely want to be sort of towards the outside here for, for a little bit of bias. Ethereal Road, D. Wayne Lucas backdooring into the Kentucky Derby. No way, right? We've seen this story before. How many times has he done it? Uh, finished second in the Risen Star, a race that came back okay. But uh, this is a must-use underneath. This horse was going to be flying. This horse is going to be flying late. Um, this horse, race is set up for a lot of speed here. Uh, speed figures are okay. The track is going to be wet and cold and sloppy, which, you know, horses in this price range as closers, are gonna, I'm excited about. He's going to be in the middle of the track. Uh, I'm going to use underneath in my exactas and trifectas. Um, D. Wayne Lucas always somehow – shows how to blow up big days. So I'm excited to see this horse uh, take a shot at it again after the disappointing uh, risen, uh, after the risen star where it wasn't as disappointing as people thought. Brings me to the nine, Rattle and Roll. Uh, name a trainer that hypes up a mo horse more than Kenny McVeek and comes that horse comes out completely flat. Um, doesn't really happen. Rattle and Roll saw the winner's circle once here in the Breeders' Futurity. Hasn't sniffed it since. Uh, empty in the Fountain of Views, past hiring horses in the Louisiana Derby. But again, uh, doing blowout workouts in the morning. And again, I think that's just Kenny McPeak style. Blow it at, blow out workouts in the morning, get on TV, hype up the horse, and then have the horse come out flat. This is the type of horse I think you're going to see the next win come in like a, a grade two or grade three at Mammoth or at Churchill. It's, it's not necessarily going to be a derby horse. It does have the points to get here. Here, uh, it does have the points to get in the derby or, or just on the cut line. So uh, just to note that the horse might be, uh, they might be doing everything and anything to get uh, at least 10 points here to guarantee their spot in the, in the gate this coming May. Um, I'm going to toss this horse. Uh, I, I've, Jerk the juice once before, and I'm not going to get fooled again. Uh, but that that's my uh, my Kenny McPeak spiel. Uh, moving on to the 10 and the 11, would you like? 
Yeah, number 10, Smile Happy. This is uh, the other Kenny McPeak horse and certainly the one who appears a little more well-meant in this spot. Uh, I do agree with you. He's, he's a tough trainer to really feel confident about going in to bet some of his runners because it, it just seems like uh, I have a hard time getting on the right side of some of his horses. Uh, I did <laughs> like Smile Happy in the Risen Star, and I don't think he ran poorly that day. I th he just looked like a horse that needed a start coming off of the layoff. I thought he ran fine. Uh, Epicenter was a little bit loose out there on the lead that day, and he's clearly proven to be a very legitimate racehorse coming back to win the Louisiana Derby quite impressively. So I think Smile Happy, he is your morning line favorite. I think he's a deserving favorite. This is not a horse that I'm against, and he will make all of my tickets. Uh, he's going to have to step forward a little bit off of that Risen Star effort, but just making a second start off the layoff here. Uh, this has always seemed to have been the plan for this horse is to make one more start and then go into the Kentucky Derby with, as his third start as a three-year-old. So uh, to me, Smile Happy. Maybe a little concerned about the post, but if the track does come up off, then maybe that's a better place to be. So I think he's a very legitimate horse in this spot. The number 11, Black Adder. Uh, this is a horse that I think you and I both talked uh, prior to the scratches coming out that we liked this horse in the Jeff Ruby. Uh, I thought he made a lot of sense in there. He clearly likes synthetic surfaces. And I, I really wish he would have run there because I thought he was very usable <laughs> in that spot. Um, I know you have some, uh, maybe still have some good feelings about him here, but for me, I think he'd be a bit of a surprise. Uh, I think he just strikes me as more of a turf horse or more of a synthetic horse. I mean, both of his wins have come you know, in a way, race that was washed off the turf and then over the synthetic at Golden Gate. Uh, I'm not quite sure he's classy enough to beat some of these, but you will get a giant price for a horse that's uh, exiting the Baffert barn and, you know, picking up Drew, who has been riding quite well when he gets up for Rudolph Brissett. So, this is a horse that uh, I wouldn't totally rule out, but he's probably not one that I'm going to go or I rush to the window to bet. Last uh, but not least, I think is number 12, Grantham. Any thoughts there? Yeah, so b before I go to Black Hatter, uh, a horse that scratches out because of an outside post and then draws 11. I mean, you you, you can't you, you, you scratch off your favorite surface because of an outside post and then you go on to dirt. You're not favorite surface and you draw post 11 so let's see um i do like that horse and i'll talk about it in, in a second but uh rounding out the field here grantham uh michael maker gaff up in the irons step step forward step forward step forward horse just continuously steps forward comes out of that key race whether as we spoke about that in a previous video i believe you caleb had him under your long shot for the tampa bay derby correct yeah that's right i had him underneath for a pretty nice exact of that day Exactly. And the horse keeps just coming and coming and coming. I think he's going to do the exact same thing. The race is, race is definitely going to be on, on the off surface. We saw what he did in the weathers on the off surface. Um, I think this could be maybe a mugger specialist. Um, right on the line of getting into the gate for the derby after that, that Tampa finish in second. So, you know, for me, this horse, I think you have to use underneath. I think it's proven itself on an off track. Um, it's continually stepped forward. It's coming out of a key race. In my mind, there's going to be a massive price here, and it just keeps on checking off one box after another after another, which I like to see. Um, so definitely a horse I'm going to be using underneath, which brings us to our top picks here. And uh, I think we might be on the same horse again. This, uh, I think our, well, at least uh, we weren't for the San Diego Derby, but uh, what's your top pick here? Yeah, so I went back and forth between Zandon and Smile Happy. I think, you know, for any kind of horizontals, I'm using both of them equally. But uh, gun to my head, I would take the four Zandon. Just watching that Risen Star, which is a common race they both came out of. I thought Zandon had the worst trip that day. He uh, kind of hopped the start a little bit, bobbled out of the gate. Uh, he was much wider than Smile Happy on the track, making his move a little earlier and swinging wide, whereas Smile Happy uh, was able to tuck inside for most of that race. And while he was caught by Smile Happy at the end and Smile Happy galloped out in front, uh, I don't think that that's necessarily representative of their ability here. I thought Zandon had the worst trip. Uh, they both looked like horses that may have just needed that start. And, you know, Flavian Pratt, he's been riding excellent, especially when he gets up for Chad Brown uh, with Jose Ortiz staying in New York to uh, keep the Clarevich mount on early voting. I think that uh, Pratt's an excellent jockey for this kind of a horse. I think he'll have him perhaps a little bit closer than he was last time, maybe a little more forwardly placed than a horse like Smile Happy. And yeah, I think Zandon gets a comfortable trip here and I think he's the horse to beat. So I'm gonna go with the number four. So I'm gonna I'm gonna join you on the four horse there. I'm, Smile Happy, uh, I just can't do the McPeak thing. I, I looked at, at 
at the, the workout pattern. I saw it was coming into this. Um, was working with Rattle and Roll previously, and the last couple workouts have been with a no-name horse called Silverleaf. So uh, I would rather take the opportunity here that Zandon Horse been working with reinvestment risk, uh, one of Ch Chad's top horses. When I see good trainer working two horses together consistently, that puts confidence in me. I'm not going to have confidence when they're working with some horse, Smiling Leaf, Silverleaf, whatever it may be, uh, some no-name horse. So Zandon's going to be my top pick here. I think there's an opportunity with the slop. It's going to help. Um, but I'm really going to focus on my long shots here and try to drive value from them. I'll probably have Smile Happy and Zandon both on the top of my, my trifectas here. But I'm going to focus on this outside of the track. I think there's definitely a bias here. I think both the 11 and the 12, Black Adder and Grantham, are both opportunities for horses to be at big prices. They're going to have an opportunity that have a, a good shot of coming up in your trifecta here. Um, again, Grantham's been on that off track and succeeded pretty well. Black Adder, I, I thought the horse was going to do amazing, but uh, it, I thought it was going to do amazing last week on the synth. It obviously scratches. I think there's an opportunity here. Those synthetic horses transfer pretty well to slop sometimes, sort of floating across the top of it. So we'll see how much rain they get. Uh, I just saw one of the DRF Twitter handles just put up. It's raining sideways at Keeneland right now. So it seems like the weather's only getting worse. It might get sloppy. We might scratch down this field. We'll see what happens. I just hope we have an opportunity to keep at least one of those races on the turf tomorrow for that cross-country pick five, which I'm very excited about. Where'd you land on your long shot? Yeah, thankfully, Keeneland's one of the few tracks in America that does run on uh, soft to yielding turf. So hopefully they can keep some of the races on tomorrow. I also landed on a, an outside closer, uh, not one of the two that you were on. However, I landed on the number eight, Ethereal Road. So this is a horse that I liked going into the Rebel. It, it just seemed like he was starting to put it together. I thought his maiden score was very impressive visually. And I thought he ran a great race in the Rebel. Uh, he actually took the lead while racing wide pretty much the entire way and looked every bit the winner until Unoho managed to dive to the rail and uh, sneak up inside the fence to get the win. Uh, Unoho didn't exactly come back to flatter that race, but I do think he had some trouble in the Arkansas. And Barbara Road, nevertheless, ran a strong uh, race in that Arkansas, getting second behind Cyberknife. So I think that kind of form has been franked and relatively uh, consistent. I think this will be a good time to see how the Oaklawn form stacks up against the rest of the country, since you do have some shippers in here from, you know, both Florida, New York, Fairgrounds, and other places as well. So I think it'll be a good measuring stick for some of these horses, but I think Ethereal Road here is going to get that right kind of outside stalking trip. And, you know, I think that at a nice price, he might be one that I'd look to uh, come running late, but uh, distance surely shouldn't be an issue for this one. I love that. Uh, as I said before, you know, D Wade and Lucas in backdooring into a derby, have a, over and over again. Let's talk about how how he's done this before. So uh, good opportunity there for a, a nice price. We have a great field of twelve for what we predict is going to be a sloppy and very off track at Keeneland this Saturday, April 9th, race number nine, five ten p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we ask you to like and subscribe. That way, you get updates from all the Horse Racing Nation and Road to the Derby videos. We also t ask you to take a look at that cross-country pick five. I think this is an opportunity for one of the best multi-leg sequences, multi-leg, multi-track sequences we've seen in a while. So definitely take a look at that cross-country pick five with that low base takeout, uh, 50 cents and low takeout there. Um, again, like and subscribe, and we will see you guys next week for our final Road to the Derby video as we cover the wild card race, the Lexington.